everybody. So today we're going to be taking a look at the new uh, circuit effects uh, script on AE scripts here. So what this does basically is it creates really cool looking circuits and it's got a bunch of different options that we're going to take a look at here. So um, the first thing you really need to do if you just want to get up and running with it is just there's three different options for fill, center out and using masks and we'll cover all of those. And the main component is the grid size. So we'll just create an 8i8 grid create the circuit and boom look at that it's done so there's a whole bunch of things that you can play with here and there it gives you a whole list of different options you can change the size of the chips in the circuit there's size or changes for you know the randomness of the different sizes you can change the size of the capacitors the randomness the colors all sorts of interesting things here um, but the power really lies in the different options available in the plugin itself here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this layer and we're going to increase our grid size let's say to like 15 by 15 just to make things a little little bit more interesting and I'll hit create circuit so we can see what that looks like and it's just gonna give us a little bit of a bigger circuit with more sort of bells and whistles in it and let's see what we got here so we got this really cool looking thing so there's a slider at the bottom and it says populate and right now it's set to 90% and what that means is it's gonna look at that 15 by 15 grid and try to populate 90% of the grid with stuff so if I take that say down to like 10% and go to create circuit it's gonna create a much more sparse looking uh, circuit board here that looks like that so, and if you take it and go all the way to 100%, it's going to try to cram as much stuff in there as possible. So, let's see what that looks like here. There we go. That looks like something you'd see inside of an iPad or something like that. So, um, usually I like to leave this around 90% at the default just because it creates sort of a more even surface, you know, and it's not completely dense and, you know, it looks a little bit more realistic. So, one of the things you might be thinking is like, hey, this looks cool, but maybe I don't want these chips or I don't want these capacitors in there. Well, it's really nice to give you an option here so you can just turn all that stuff off. So, if you don't want any chips and you don't want any resistors, but you just want a ton of capacitors in there, you just toggle the options and here you go. So you can kind of decide how you want this to look and you know if every time you hit the button it just kind of creates a new random circuit so you can kind of get different looks out of it. So one of the other options in here is it has uh, the number of line vertices and basically what that means is it's going to uh, sort of create uh, paths on the circuit board that are between 1 and 15 sort of sections away. So I'm just going to turn off all the other options in here and leave all these at this setting here. Hit create circuit. And you can see what it's doing is it's giving me a mix of these really, really long paths. Like this one goes all the way up and around here because it's 15 kind of like dots on the circuit away. And then minimum is one dot away. So it's trying to create an overall circuit that fits within those parameters. So if I take this and say change it to 10 and 15 and create a new circuit, it's just going to try to create one with long paths in it. And sometimes if your uh, density size isn't big enough like this, it's not going to be able to create a whole bunch of them, right? So Generally, you want to leave this on a sort of the low scale, but if you want to take it to one and say five, now it's going to create a whole bunch of little tiny paths rather than having some big ones in there. So uh, one of the big things with this plugin when it first came out is that um, a bunch of electrical engineers were like, well, this is wonderful, but these circuits would never actually be created because you've got lines that are sort of intersecting here, and that would obviously short out your circuit. So uh, what you could do is there's a setting for that, fortunately. So if you go into settings, there's a checkbox here. So avoid crossing of circuit lines. And what that'll do is exactly what it says, is it creates a circuit, but it makes sure that nothing overlaps and nothing touches. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So it takes a little bit longer to compare compute that because it has to figure out all the intersections and things like that. Um, but it's a really good option if you want your circuit board to look more clean and actually more real. So um, the other thing about this plugin is that it basically just you know puts all these effects on one layer and when you start to get into really really heavy grid sizes like you know up to like 30 or more um, this layer just has a lot of assets and it. it can become a little bit slower to work with so if you want to split that stuff out what you can do is you can say put circuit parts on separate layers so if you do that and create a grid what it will do is it'll put the back plate the lines and the circles all on their own layers so then you can just toggle those off individually like this so what that also means is you can do some neat stuff with this we can start to take these lines and duplicate them and otherwise you would have to duplicate the entire layer with all those assets in it so it's just a nice way of breaking those assets out so one of the other things that you can kind of play with here is on the lines specifically there's a trim start and end so if I take my trim start to say 10 and my trim end to like 90 I'm just going to hide the controls here and then you can start to play with this trim offset you can start to create these really really interesting animations in here so here I'll turn that on and that's starting to look pretty cool 
So one of the things though is if you'll notice, all the trim points are in the middle of the lines here. And so there's this other option in settings to randomize the trim starting point. So I'm gonna click that and create a new circuit and see how that looks here. So now what we can do is if I set this to 10 and this to 90 and I start rotating this around, you can see that the trim points are kind of like a little bit randomized within the different lines there. So also now that these are on separate layers, we can do some neat stuff. So I'm gonna leave this as is. I'm just gonna set this back to zero. I'm going to duplicate it and then I'll say, take my trim and set this to like 80. So now I've got this really tiny point. And if I set this to white and then maybe add a little bit of glow to it or something like that, Let's boost that way up and boost this up a little bit. So maybe if I add some like star glow to that now, let's add that. And then I can just boost the light up a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And now if I have that on the end, now I've got this really, really sort of like hot point on the end here. And if I just animate this really easily, I'll just do time, let's say times 100. And I'll do the same thing to the other layer and go to this one, go time times 100. Now if we do a little preview of that, we have this kind of like hot point at the end of that sort of like traveling through. So pretty neat. So the next thing that we can do is I'll go back to the main settings here on grid. There's the option for center out. And basically uh, this is kind of the same thing, but it leaves a hole in the center and you can have a size for the radius. So I'll just make that. And you can see it just sort of leaves a hole in the middle here for like a processor or a logo or something like that. And you can bring the radius down to an even smaller size if you want to do like a 10% hole, you can do that. And you can see what that looks like here. Let's see what it does. Yeah, really, really tiny in the middle. Um, so this is neat, but let's just say you wanted to actually have a custom shape in the middle. And so that's what the using masks does. So what you do is you go over to that and you create a grid guide. And what it does is it creates this giant grid. And then you can just sort of make like an arbitrary shape in the middle. So if you want to say chop off all of these ones like this, sort of make like a little shape like this, like so, then what you can do is under masks, Oh, I screwed that up. I made a shape layer instead of a mask here. So what I'll do, make sure that's set to masks. Here, go down here. Yoink, 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 yoink. Like that. And so now what we can do is go create circuit by using mask, and it's going to create a circuit just within that point there. So that's kind of cool. And you can also do the inverse. So I can delete all that, go back to this, go into my masks, and hit subtract, and now it's going to create a circuit around that point. Oof, there we go. And so now we have this nice hole around the edge. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can create lots of different looks for it. You can change all the colors and do all sorts of interesting things with circuit effects. Yeah.